just in time You found me just in time That's the swinging sounds of Ricky Lee Jones from her new album, Pieces of Treasure. Ricky is reunited with producer Russ Teitelman, and together they've created a jazz album that is uniquely Ricky Lee Jones. I was thinking I needed a professional uh, producer. There are a lot of people who are creative or they know a lot of musicians, they'll put them together. <laughs> but a professional guy listens. That's what he does first and foremost. And Russ and I, Russ is a kind person, but once I hooked up with him and we had a couple lunches and he's deliciously intellectual and in a New York way. And he's always going out to the theater or classical music or jazz or a clarinet or a oud player. It's always <laughs> And that was inspiring for me. But what he does in the studio, make sure I'm is um, he listens with love. Mm. Wanted to have somebody, and and it and it was terrible suffering though to put myself in the studio with people who did not love me. Right. And I think I did that for years because I thought that's what other people did. And if I did that, it's a child's reasoning, but if I did it, I'd be like them. And because um, I've always been different. And mm -hmm. um, whether it was kind of, well, I don't know what you'd call that music of the 90s that was kind of Nirvana, but singer songwriters. And yeah, kind of grunge pop kind of thing. <laughs> Whatever, yeah, that maybe when they go in the studio, this guy produces them. But every time I met that guy, you know, it was just a loveless, loveless. Right. So, um, so the moment that I was in the studio with Russ, there was this respect and dignity, respect towards me, dignity, and that's so lifting and it changes what I or the artist can do when you have someone listening with love and respect. You can do wonderful things. I'll keep it about me. I can do wonderful things. So it <laughs> but I think I knew instinctively that if I went back to the source of the great work and we w weren't sentimental and we didn't try to replicate anything that maybe a great work would happen because that's what we do. So mm -hmm. my surprise, a great work did happen. Yep. In five days. Five days. We beat God. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Still waiting two days there for yeah, the Lord. Yeah, another day, a couple of days of rest. So what was, So what were the sessions? What did they feel like to you? Tell me, put me in the room with you. Sure. Um, they're never long, five hours, because you get tired. So, but then we got like, so if I got there at 11 and then we left at six, that was the longest day. But we got three songs on two sub two consecutive days and started one song yay next day two songs wow we had two songs next day three songs we've got half the record <laughs> next day <laughs> three songs next day one so we had pretty much 10 the next week we had to go to a different studio we only had that studio for five or six days and in the other studio which was a a, a train ride to Queens. That was actually the most exciting part of it, riding on the subway. And there we did things like put the oud on. Right. We had space for a saxophone, put the saxophone on, tried to put them on, um, here's that rainy day, and went, wow, the space is much, much better than a solo. So we just left all that space there. It's fantastic. Um, and then things that, I had had an issue with, we tried to record them again. And then again, if you don't get it 
you, the first time you won't get it the third. And that was the other lesson. So we, we <laughs> did that for a month and then we were done. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so, um, so the, the the songs, the ten songs, are classics from a bygone era. Most of them. Uh, how, who was making those decisions and selections? Yeah, it was just an exchange um, for a month. I like this uh, five songs or three songs or the the reason I didn't do any song if if I actually really didn't like it, but if I didn't know it at all. I didn't think I would be able to learn it and make it as close to me as the things that I knew. Right. It was okay if I only knew part of one, like, uh, here's that reading day, which right. turned out to be great. But, um, but, but here's that rainy day has very bizarre key change in the middle of a sentence. And um, maybe I should yeah. The leftover dream, maybe it should have changed. So it seems to start out minory and then go to that have. What is it doing? <laughs> so <laughs> I had to practice that one a lot and, and then I got it. Yeah. Right, right, right. So how do you go about making a song your own like that? One, Especially something that everybody's heard a thousand times by a thousand other singers. Well, one reason is I haven't heard it a thousand times. So okay. It's in this case sticking with that song. Yep. Uh, I had seen hit Sinatra do it in a TV show, along with one of my favorite songs that never entered my mind. And I believe um, "Good Riddance Goodbye." He did the bridge of uh, "The Road Gets Tougher" and um, the one that got away. So I looked at him singing the song. I understand that it's a a beaten person, but not a defeated person. I put the skin of the, you know, I I put on the person, who, you know, I, I've been that, but I'm me. I put on the person who's singing the thing. And I, I think ultimately it's the melody is the way I get in. Um, right. Melodies tell me, I like the lyrics, but the melodies are the where I'm going to have the ecstasy, you know, the singing and feeling it on my skeleton. And um, so it's a wonderful thing that it's a melody and a lyric, because you almost have two stories being told as a singer when, when you're not just going, ba ba boo de do de do ba boo de de I like doing that. Maybe I should have saved this is going to be hard to say, but those leftover dreams, but I'll try. So <laughs> with clumsy lyrics like that, um, this time I decided to over-articulate and stand by the lyric. And um, and when I do, because I've never done that, I, I'm more from the Van Morrison school of, of use sounds and, and be the horn, but... Right. But... When I did that with this song, especially in September song, um, it was like weird kabuki theater. You know, it's it's something uh, like what's the line about the and with the autumn chills? If you say that ah, instead of saying ah no, if you say autumn, make the M sound chill sets the leaves to flame. It's fantastic making all those sounds. <laughs> and I'm singing slow enough that I can make all those sounds as I sing. So a lot of fun things happened uh, while I sang this, yes. Sounds like, now, did, I'm curious about the cover, the cover art, the photo that- ah, I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the story behind that? Well, that was the very first, photo session I did. I think I, I don't know if you got what I wrote about, but, um, and it was in a drawer over here. My mother kept it and then, and then it ended up in a drawer in plastic paper. And I have been looking for a title and a cover because I have this beautiful collection of songs, but what am I going to call it? Why do I have to call it anything? Right. 
Why do I have to have a cover? You know, all these impediments or not that right. that bring people into the thing. You know, what if I just put this flower on the cover? <laughs> Would that be all right? So, you know, if I did that, then, you know, thousands of people wouldn't even listen. So it's a, it's a stupid, complicated thing. So I thought I started thinking about how the record was reminding me of pirates or of where Russ and I left off, that right. we had our mark really greatly. Um, and so I started messing around with, hello, Jesse, my dog's licking my foot. <laughs> okay, everything's okay. I started messing around um, with words that have to do with pirates, pieces of eight, sunken treasure, um, ahoy, <laughs> or whatever. Arr. <laughs> and, um, and so I was doing that, and then I found this cover and went, oh, this is the most remarkable photograph, and and it's iconic. I know it doesn't have anything to do with the timber of the music, but it does have something to do with it because it's so strong and the music is so strong. So I'm going to make that connection. And um, I believe that the purpose of a cover is to invite you in. If you were in the record store looking at covers, you go, oh, what's that one? <laughs> so that with with the old school idea that you know thinking of that whipped cream cover with uh, Herb Alpert and the girl. Oh yes. The that why not? Why not? <laughs> I still I, I think I see pictures of that woman on Facebook. She's still around, you know, and she's like yeah. eighty some years old now. Oh, <laughs> is she good for her? <laughs> is she holding a can of whipped cream? <laughs> yeah, I, I would only hope so. Yes, I'm. I'm a record collector myself, and I can't tell you how many copies of that thing I've seen in Salvation Armies around. <laughs> it's just everywhere. You know, you can see they put a, you know, white thing around her, and then, but it was the it was the idea that yeah, exactly she might be covered with whipped cream. Yes, 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 yes. Now I'm curious. I know you wrote uh, your memoir and released that a couple of years ago. Yeah. What process? What was that process like? And does that feed into your music since then by yeah, going you, through that and looking at yourself like that? The process was life-changing. Once I finished my book, I was free of, you know, I always wanted to tell their stories and tell mine and the crafting of mine so that I told you some, but not too much, like that talking heads line, tell yeah. us a little bit, but not too much and um, made it like fiction so that it wasn't a diary. I achieved what I wanted to do. And artistically, for me, it was a great accomplishment. But on a personal level, I was free of all of them, all the ghosts and all the stories. And I, I just felt like I was at the beginning of a new por portion, partition, of a new portion of life, a mm -hmm. new gate. And um, so it's been fantastic and it might lend this enthusiasm that I have. And, you know, by now in interviews, I'd be like, oh, don't ask me that again. But I right. feel so, <laughs> so, Sorry about that. <laughs> so enthusiastic to be part of the world. What a great job I have. Right. Talking to you in New Zealand. And, and I just know it. And every moment I know it. And and I and I'm declaring it everywhere I go. I, I think it's going to be a wonderful way to live my life. But I don't think I could have done it if I hadn't written that book. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So do you ha have a stockpile of songs of your own ready to go now that you've got pretty this? Much, pretty much. I have quite a few ideas and maybe five finished songs the question is, what direction do I want to go? And right. I've always wanted to do theater. So do I not put out the record and, and, and you know, develop theater around this music? Um, or, you know, I'm not sure what we'll do. It's a very diverse, like the first record. There's a lot of different kinds of things I've been writing. So, yes, hopefully um, 
you know. And I first went to Russ to talk to him about doing this, which I just really wasn't sure about. I thought, I just don't want to get in there and find that we're in any way trying to do what we did before. Or, um, you know, what if I think he's square? <laughs> what if he doesn't really like my my writing anymore? You know, all the what ifs. What if we right, right. Do? And so, and so he solved that by saying, "Let's do a jazz record." He didn't even uh, we didn't even go into the into my song. And, okay, that must be what we're supposed to do. And and so having done that together, I realized or remembered that what's valuable about making this art is love and kindness and compassion with a human being. And there is no producer if there's no loving human being. That's just a that's just never going to happen in my life again. So, whoever it is, if I bring somebody in to help me, then they got to really help me. You know, they right. can't <laughs> psychologically, you know, defeat me. So, yeah. Uh, uh, so, you, are you taking the show on the road? You said you got some dates coming up. Is it, would, is it based around the same kind of band that you got on the record here? Yeah, that, I wish I fun. could take the band, but you know uh, the drummer's coming with me. I uh, the the vibraphonist is eighty five. Well, oh, that's um, Mike Mike Maneri. Yeah, he's incredible, and he, he came to the Birdland show. That yeah. that was a wonderful surprise. But um, these guys are so natural and easy, and and to play with a singer, you have to do two things. You have to Follow them and lead them. And there are so few accompanists who know how to do that. They play, guys or, or guys, instrumentalists play with each other. Yep. And they don't know how to not play and listen while you sing. Oh, she's ending on that note. I'm going to help her move now. Uh -huh. And then play. So it's it's a dying art, as far as I can tell. And Rob Mounsey, who played on the record, does a lot of Steely Dan stuff. Right. But I guess he tours so much, he just doesn't want to go out anymore. But I, I haven't given up getting, you know, trying to get him to go out. If the record, if the record has wings, maybe I'll make enough that I can pay him. To go <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but that's a, that sounds like I'm not confident about who we will hire. We're still listening to the people. And I think um, we have a wonderful guitar player. Um, I saw a tape of, of what looks like he's going to be a great pianist, but he's not available till June. So we'll put something together and I'll, I'm apprehensive, but it's just, it's really just excitement. It's not, it's not really fear. Touring is hard. Let me, let me tell you. Yeah. And you have to have the right group of people around you so that at least when you're on stage, you have a happy time. If you got the wrong people and then, you know, you're struggling with their ego or their, their, I had a guy who always made a mistake at the same place in the same song every single night. I was like, <laughs> that got a problem, man. And <laughs> I, thought, I feel bad for him, but finally, you're messing up my show, man, every night. So I have a lot of generosity for people, but ultimately, I, I just really like to give people who can, can play every night what they're supposed to play. <laughs> that didn't sound nice, did it? But... <laughs> But anyway, all those memories can fill me with with apprehension about uh, uh, all brand new ensemble. I've been working with this guy, Mike Dillon, for five years. He's a right. punk rock. He would describe himself as a, as a punk rock vibraphonist. Oh, good. <laughs> he visceral. He jumps up on the instrument and, and he doesn't do this with me. But what he brings is absolute devotion and love to that stage every night so that I walk out just feeling like I am loved by the guy on the vibraphone. And so th this will be a new ensemble and a different kind of energy. And I guess, you know, I made this choice. So I guess it's time to do this. So. Cool. Sounds like you're ready. Oh, you got yeah. about a day and a half. You're going to answer some questions. What else are you going to do today? Here we go. Yep. You get, very good. All righty. Well, hopefully you can make your way down to this part of the world at some point again. Uh, We're going to Australia. Um, That's close enough. Get over here. Yes, oh, so we'll come over there and go to Tahiti and have There you go. Yeah.
<laughs> Big audience in Tahiti, a lot of mosquitoes waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't have we have a few here, but not not like that. So it should be good. All righty. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me and making this record. It's been a pleasure listening to it and listening to you. So uh, have a good day. I have to tell you one more thing, though. Okay. When I was in Tahiti the first time, I was 1984, 85. I got I got bit by mosquitoes so badly. I counted the mosquito bites on one leg, and I had over a hundred bites on oh one my leg. God. I did get, I got sick as it turned out, but that, so I know they're still waiting for my return. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. <laughs>